years ago, it was a Friday afternoon, I was just leaving from school. Uh, I was doing my undergraduate at York University. At that point, I wasn't really engaged in the church. Uh, I had walked away from the church, had some encounters as a young person, and I had decided I don't really need God, I can just do this thing on my own. Uh, on my way home on that specific Friday, it was uh, near to Christmas, almost around this same time that we're doing this filming for this testimonial. As I'm driving down Kiel, heading south, uh, I'm driving past a car accident and I'm looking to see what's happened and see that everything's okay and then here comes a tow truck and it's reversing quickly uh, the wrong way down the street because he's got to get there to make sure that he hooks that car up. And as he's reversing and I'm looking at the accident and I change lanes, all of a sudden what I find now is, is that I am going forward and this tow truck, it's reversing towards me. There's no time. I can't change lanes to the left. I can't go on the curb on the grass to the right. And so really what ends up happening is, is as I try to slam my brakes and as he's reversing, bang, our two cars collide. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in an accident before, um, but it's one of the scariest things that you will ever encounter in your life. Even though it's happening in real time, everything slows down in the vehicle. I'm driving a Honda Accord, it's tinted, I've got my system in there, and everything's happening so fast as the cars collide, as the truck hits my car, uh, the speakers fly from the back, my uh, body is jolted forward, my head hits the steering wheel, my thumbs jam into the steering wheel, um, everything's flying everywhere and before I know it my head is now hitting the glass in the front windshield. That happened because I didn't have my seatbelt on and the truth is as you listen to this testimony you'll find that i had been riding around without a seatbelt for a very long time, uh, I just didn't have it on on the car uh, on that day. Uh, after I get out of the car, I look at my vehicle, it's completely totaled. I've got glass that's sticking out of my head. Uh, there's people running towards the scene, but I'm all by myself. And I get out of the car and the guy says to me, are you okay? I didn't see you. And I look at him and I'm like, what are you doing? Uh, what he doesn't know is, is that I am angry, but I'm also very frightened in this moment because the truth is I have this near death experience. That's not how I plan to do my day. I plan to go to class. I plan to do some grocery shopping. I plan to go home to my family. And now I'm in this accident. And then the reality hits me because this is the very first time that I'm not by myself. Those of you that know me know I'm a very popular guy. I've got family. I've got friends. And I always have somebody around me. But in this moment, I'm all by myself. And so I go and I sit on the grass and I'm picking out these shards of glass from my forehead. I still can't believe this has just happened to me. And while I'm sitting there on the grass, I hear clear as day, just as you can hear my voice right now. I hear God speaking to me and he says to me, you know I want more for your life than just this. And so I'm thinking to myself, what does he mean? Well, here I am. I'm a pastor in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And on that day, it was the turning point of my life. I realized that I'd been living for my education, living for my part-time job, living for my friends, living for every other person, but for Jesus Christ who died for me on the cross. And so on that day, I realized, and I came to that realization very quickly, that you can have everything in this world, but if you don't have Jesus, you have absolutely nothing. I also learned on that day that it's not about the temporary things. It's not about the money, it's not about the education, it's not about the cars, it's not about the system that was now destroyed in my vehicle. It was about whether or not I was living to my full capacity in what Jesus Christ wanted me to do with my life. And so on that day, and even today, I've come to the understanding that without Christ, I am absolutely nothing. And now that I'm a little bit older and a little bit wiser, I re recall and I understand that in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5, the Bible records that Jesus, he will never leave us nor forsake us. On that grass, on that day, while there was tons of people running around that I didn't know, I realize now that I only had God. So maybe all I want to tell you is this. 
that on that day Jesus came to my rescue. And now I have been rescued. Hey, you're watching We The Rescued, and what you've just seen is the first installment of our Week of Prayer video series for the Ontario Conference Youth Department. As more testimonies are coming your way, we're going to be um, just inspired by what God has done in people's lives, and hopefully that pushes us to desire to pray ourselves. Today, on our first day, our prayer topic is just our own personal concerns. We'd like you to invite the Holy Spirit to personally be at work in your life, as well as whatever concerns you might have for your own self, whatever things you want to bring before the throne of grace, that's yours. So after you finish watching this video, after this is done, take a few moments just to invite him personally to come into your life, to work on the things that you're concerned about. This is your time, it's free, it's for you. It's for you to bring all of your burdens and concerns before God as you need. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned with us as we embark on this journey together.